I am uh, Dr. Nargis Sashrav and uh, today we are discussing uh, a filmic history taking and examination. First head that uh, we need to uh, elaborate is uh, biodata. And uh, uh, the, uh, okay, now the ophthalmic uh, history is different from medical history in the, that that ophthalmic uh, history is uh, much deeper and uh, it is uh, more focused on the eye problems. Okay. Otherwise, it is the heads will be the same. So in biodata, we will also name the age of the patient because uh, in children, certain tumors are more common, such as retroblastoma, certain conditions are specific for childhood, such as buff thalamus, which is related to childhood glaucoma. And uh, in adults, uh, certain conditions are more common, such as cataracts and uh, tumors, uh, which are uh, which happen in uh, adulthood or choroidal Then. Uh, then uh, the gender of the patient is important. Certain uh, illnesses are more common in males and certainly in females. Then occupational uh, hazards are also there. For example, uh, uh, carpenters are prone to chisel and hammer injury. Uh, they get get uh, hard bodies in their eyes. Uh, and uh, gardeners they can have uh, fungal ulcers because uh, we get uh, fungal ulcers because of plants. Uh, okay. Then uh, the address, uh, it has a little significance, but uh, over here in the civil hospital, we generally cater to the uh, uh, lower social strata. And so we have to know that we should not uh, prescribe fancy treatments to them. Okay, the medical status also is important uh, because we have to take the uh, history of the patient. Because there can be certain uh, things related to the pregnancy and the patient. Okay, so is this clear? We move on to the next step. Okay, next slide is presenting complaints. In uh, presenting complaints, uh, we will I do uh, ask the eye specific complaints. That is, uh, most common is decrease in vision. And uh, decrease in vision, we, uh, we will ask the duration. That is, uh, and whether it is in one eye or both eyes. And, uh, uh, and what will be the cause? Most common causes are cataracts and uh, diabetic retropathy. Diabetes is also very common in our population. Then, uh, the other associated symptoms are like flashes. Flashes are associated with the retinal uh, detachment and must have heard of retinal detachment. And uh, then uh, pain is another important uh, symptom. Uh, this can be related to corneal ulcer or and uh, there is a severe infection of the, all the layers of the eye and ophthalmitis. So in presenting complaints, we will ask the common eye complaints and we will elaborate on them and on the associated symptoms. Okay, next, okay, in the picture you can see a cataract. This is a opacification of the lens and uh, this reflex is also called leukoporia, that is white blue. This you can see a classification of the body and a chemospinic diver, and this is the body lens. Okay, now coming to history of presenting complaints. In history of presenting complaints, uh, you will ask the onset of and uh, 
what uh, disease has a gradual uh, onset, there is a gradual uh, decrease in vision in cataracts. And uh, the duration is important. How long has the uh, decrease in vision been there? And uh, is it in uh, one or the both eyes? And is the mystery of uh, spectacles? And uh, because we need to know how much the patient, uh, is, what the vision is before the surgery and how uh, how it will be after surgery. And uh, any associated complaints, like whether the vision is better in the night or in the day. Okay. Then uh, there can be uh, watering in uh, childhood uh, is another scenario. The cause can be either glaucoma or there can be discharge in conjunctivitis. And then in the issue of uh, presenting complaints, uh, we will also give a brief treatment. Okay, next, here is the past history. In past history, we will ask for any similar previous episodes. Like, uh, for example, uh, in the uh, angle closure of glaucoma, which is uh, one of the variants of glaucoma, we will ask whether uh, there was a painful red eye previously and uh, what treatment was taken and uh, other important things are in the diseases most important are diabetes and hypertension and these because uh, this is a surgical field so these have to be controlled and uh, we have to know which type of diabetes it is which medicine the patient is taking similarly for hypertension because if they are not under control then we cannot proceed to surgery. Okay. Now, in family history, uh, as you can see, all the kids here, they are, uh, they are uh, cousins or siblings and they're all wearing glasses. So, uh, similar sort of uh, problems can occur in parents or siblings. So, they are important. it's important to take the family history and uh, refractive errors and uh, primary open and glaucoma, retinoblastoma, which is a childhood tumor, and diabetes and hypertension. These are common family problems occur in families. Okay, socioeconomic history, as I mentioned, we mostly get to the lower social strata. It is important because we should not prescribe any hi-fi medicine that make them feel bad or any hi-fi treatments like LASIK or femoralism. We should not pay advice to them. Okay, so this was about the history. If there are any questions, you can ask. Okay, I don't see any questions, so I proceed. Okay, now coming to the eye examination. So just give me a minute. OS? OS? Huh. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Sorry, I didn't see the feedbacks. I'm getting on to the voice. Mic, yeah, mic is switched. Okay, I'm taking the mic in my hand now. So, if there are any questions, because you could not hear me uh, clearly, you can ask questions. Achha. Okay, is the voice clear now? Okay, good. So, if there are any questions in history taking, you're welcome to ask. Okay, or should I proceed with the examination? Eye examination?
सोशो इकोनॉमिक ओके सोशो इकोनॉमिक हिस्ट्री आई जस्ट सेट दैट सोशो इकोनॉमिक वे बेसिकली वी डील विद लोअर सोशल इकोनॉमिक स्ट्रेटा एंड सो वी शुड नॉट प्रिस्क्राइब दैम एनी हाई फाई ट्रीटमेंट्स and to make them feel bad for example lasik surgery or femto second laser surgery should not be advised to them we should keep in mind their pocket and not advise them expensive treatments also otherwise we uh, cater to the poor and the lower social strata over here in civil hospital okay so we'll proceed to on to the examination now okay i examination the first and the foremost thing that we need to uh, examine is the visual acuity okay in uh, visual acuity uh, i think there will be a separate uh, lecture on that as well but anyway uh, visual acuity we will uh, do through the snellens chart and uh, uh, we uh, in i we will always examine one eye that is the right eye in the beginning and then we go for the left eye okay and we cover the Uh, left eye and we will see the vision in the that eye and we will mention it as 66 if it's perfect 660 if they can see the top line okay okay so visual acuity i am not elaborating because of a separate lecture okay the, the next thing that is important is pupils pupils may we will uh, do, do the pupil examination uh, with the two torches we will do the direct reflex the consensual reflex and we will do the swinging flashlight test three tests and these will be uh, the swinging flashlight test is for checking the relative afferent pupillary defect rapd that is very important this will also be dealt in detail the pupillary examinations we should know basically the heads that there will be three heads of pupil examination that is direct pupillary reflex the consensual or the indirect pupillary reflex and the swinging flashlight or the relative afferent pupillary defect okay then there is the slit lamp examination uh, or torch examination previously what used to be done with the torch has been taken over now since many years by the slit lamp because i is a small structure and to uh, examine it in it uh, in, de in detail we need magnification as well as illumination okay so that's why the slit lamp is there and when you visit the clinics you will see uh, the slit lamp the doctor and the patient both sit on it uh, on either side and uh, there is illumination and uh, we will see the i under different types of magnification okay we go about the examination from front to back each structure is seen that is at first the lids will be examined and uh, you should have in mind what uh, problems to look for in the lids for example there can be blepharitis that is inflammation of the lids or infection of the lids or there can be certain swellings such as uh calesion and sty okay then you come on to the lashes lashes may you can have a certain a condition which is called polyosis that is white lashes or there can be a uh, misdirection of the lashes or the lids which is called entropion is inward turning of the lids and ectropion is outward turning of the lids okay so if you have these things in mind then you will be able to concentrate on what to look for in examination okay at your level you are not supposed to do slit lamp examination you will be doing torch examination but you should know the main conditions okay then in conjunctiva what is most common is most people know conjunctivitis and then cornea uh, can have corneal ulcers or they can be keratitis keratitis can be of different types which will be discussed and it appears as a white patch on the cornea then comes the anterior chamber which is the space between the cornea and the iris and in the anterior chamber it is usually clear fluid which is called aqueous but in uh, cases of infection or trauma you can have blood in the anterior chamber which is called a hyphema 
or there can be pus in the anterior chamber which is called a hypopion it has a level that is why it's being called hypopion okay then there is iris iris is uh, what most of you know that is the portion which gives color to the eye jo colored eyes hoti hain green and blue and uh, brown and all uh, and also mostly are asian black eyes they are because of the iris so there can be anaridia absence of the iris or there can be uh, iatrogenic that is medically made uh, holes in the iris Both, uh, those are made in cases of uh, usually high pressure glaucoma I mean, therapeutic okay so next structure that we examine is the lens the lens is a clear portion and uh, uh it can have uh, this is uh, the portion of the eye which along with the cornea and the different interfaces is responsible for the refractive power of the eye and lens can have uh, different uh, types of problems such as it can most common is a cataract which is an opacification in the lens or there can be partial dislocation of the lens and uh, that is called uh, or, uh, for example in certain syndromes or in cases of trauma plus there can be uh, also artificial lens in the eye which is called pseudophakia and uh, when uh, that is the natural state of the eye when we have our original lens that is called the person is called phakic that is the the, uh, the lens is original lens is present in the eye okay in this picture you can see torch examination is being conducted and the doctor is shielding the other eye so probably they are doing the pupillary examination and uh, this is so that because the so that the light reflex doesn't go to the other eye because if you illuminate one eye then the pupil in the other eye also constricts if the light falls on it Okay, in this picture, you can see the slit lamp. Okay, this is the patient. This is the doctor's back, and this is the examination eyepiece, and this is the this is where it is being viewed under magnification and illumination. Okay, now the structures of eye are. more or less examined and with a torch only you can see the main structures main and main problems with slit lamp you can see the details okay then uh, you go on for iop that is the intraocular pressure intraocular pressure is uh, measured on the slit lamp by means of uh, applination tonometer i will show you in the previous picture let's see if it was shown no it's not there but when you visit the clinics inshallah then we will show you the application tonometer there are different types of tonometer and uh this this one is conjunction with the slit lamp is convenient and uh, we uh, prior to taking the pressure of the eye we put in a topical anesthetic made by means of drops that is alkane and then uh, ideally we should also use fluorescein strips which are yellow in color and we put on the blue filter and then we take the intraocular pressure which is measured in millimeters of mercury and the normal range is 11 to 21 millimeters of mercury if it is above that then we should suspect glaucoma and we go for further tests for that and uh, in low uh, pressure has other causes which we will look into so fluorescein staining is also important uh, in conjunction with applination because it the there are two rings which are seen i'll see if there is a picture yes okay so in this picture you can see the applination uh, tonometer and uh, this is at an angle so that it aligns a very gentle pressure is given on the cornea so as not to damage it and 
okay now you see these two rings this ring and this ring they have to coincide here if they are here or he if they are here that means the pressure is low and if they are the rings are ap approximating here that means the pressure is high so the rings have to approximate this is the top of the ring and this is the bottom of the ring and we align it by means of here there's a lever below here we align it and uh, then we take the intraocular pressure and the normal range i am again repeating is 11 to 21 millimeters of mercury okay now there are other uh, means of also taking intraocular pressure this one was in conjunction with the slit lamp the most convenient the other methods are the short stonometer which is manual and it can be done on a, a patient who is lying down and uh, during uh, and in the uh, ot also the operation theater and in children also and anesthesia and then there are the air puff tonometers which are non contact so these are good in times of covid also that is because these are contact ones okay and by the way we should uh, sterilize the heads of the tonometers i'll show you the head again this is the head see it is touching and it will touch other people's corneas also and get transmit infection because my, you might have heard that uh, people with corona were also presenting with conjunctivitis so one can never be too careful and a lot of ophthalmologists were also catching uh, covid because of the close contact so we were using a lot of visors and goggles to save ourselves anyway so this is the head of the tonometer and uh, corona or no corona it has to be sterilized ideally every time then alcohol swab and you wait for 5 10 minutes for it to dry up before taking intraocular pressure in the next patient so that we don't transmit any disease the diseases which can be transmitted through these heads can be hepatitis and hiv also besides infections so one can never be too careful okay so this uh, about winds up the lecture if there are any questions you are most welcome i can go through them again Okay, everybody. I don't see any questions. So let me see. Let me check again if there are any questions. Otherwise, I'm winding up. So I'm checking the attendance right now.